Okay. You want to talk about Arkham? Arkham. Tell me about. Tell me what, what you really think, Mitch. Articling, articling, I think, was a great idea 100 years ago. I think it was a fabulous idea 100 years ago. I think even 50 years ago, it was probably a really good idea. I think the, that now, unless we can guarantee every person who wants to become a lawyer in this province an articling position, that we've set up a barrier that is unfair. We're setting students and wannabe lawyers up for failure by creating a, a barrier that they can't reach. And it, it shouldn't be up to them to reach it. I mean, it should be, we should have a level, level playing field. So if we cannot have a level playing field, then we can't, we can't have that bar anymore. And, and, and I know, you know, your view is that you know, the bar, it's ridiculous that we can't create it, but that's just the environment we live in where there aren't enough marketing positions, so we have to create a system, and a PLTC um, system would be available to all. You, I, I think it was you who reported earlier this week about Osgood Hall making a submission. Yeah. Um, in order to, to the Law Society in order to take over this um, well, well, okay. First of all, am, am okay. I attributing correctly? It was, it was you, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was me. It's, it's, it's just because uh, I had an interesting discussion with um, with the Dean of Osgood. Um, very brief discussion, so I don't have a lot of deals, details. Um, and I guess it may or may not come, come out, depending on how the voting goes later on this month. But uh, essentially, you know, it's, it's an idea of Osgood or various law schools taking over and creating the PLTC and making it better than the articling experience, such that nobody wants to article anymore because the PLT experience, P PLTC experience is, is far superior, and then articling will then just die a natural death. So the academics who've been unable to develop a three-year law school program it should be a four-year program me, with then, that program in. That, but that, it, that prepares people to enter into um, the marketplace as, as articling students um, and have been resoundingly attacked for their failure to create people with any practical skills. They, in your view, are the um, proper candidates to create the replacement of articling, which represents the only practical training that most lawyers receive um, before actually being admitted to the bar. I think that makes no sense at all. I. I didn't say that they're the proper people. I just, I just said it was an interesting idea, and I think, I think, for me conceptually, if you create a PLTC that is superior to articling, that's that's a no-brainer. So now, whether they're the right guys to do it or somebody else remains to be seen. But that's the first I'd ever heard of someone actually saying, you know what, articling is too inconsistent all across the province. You know, depending on where you article, your experience is going to be all over the map. So that in itself, beyond being, you know, the fact that you can't get a job, when you do get a job, who knows whether your articling is going to be of any use to you, okay? Um, that, uh, a consistent PLTC that is, that if you created a much better experience and superior than that, then that's the answer. And that's why, like, the minority option, which is just, just, just get rid of, with articles, just, just, yeah. just, you know what? Let's just get rid of it. Now. So I I have a very different point of view about this. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and I don't believe I'm romanticizing, based on my own experience, which was extremely good as articling student. I, I think articling is an important stepping stone to being able to enter into a law office, mm -hmm. the legal culture, um, the work that lawyers typically do. Um, as a colleague as opposed to a novice. And, you know, I know in, in your book, you don't have much respect, um, or at least the characters in your book don't expect, ex express much respect for students and lawyers with less than five years' experience. Um, and I would have concern about flooding the market um, with people who are licensed to practice law, who essentially got not a day's experience, real experience in law offices. Just, just like I, the United States. Well. I think that we can read all kinds of interesting tales in the United States about um, certain first-year lawyers and the kinds of things they do, but we're not going there today. 
Um, I think the articling process is really valuable. I think it needs to be strengthened. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, any of the options that the Law Society is currently presented are going to come with a price tag. Yeah. Once the price tag is, 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 is firmly budgeted out, the question of whether those monies um, would be better spent on improving the articling process or some new untried innovation, I think it's a reasonable question um, to, to consider. Um, so my, my take on it is, is that at this point, more study is a really good idea. And I know how you feel about that. We can, uh, we can death by a thousand studies, but I have no objection to articling as long as it's consistent and everyone can get an article. That's all I care about. Well, when you say so, everyone, I, I want to talk about everyone. And my question is, is since the law schools within Canada and perhaps more critically outside of Canada mm -hmm. take no responsibility at all for the numbers of graduates they send into the marketplace, and I'm referring primarily to the, the non-Canadian educators that offer sort of a, a modicum of Canadian content in their curriculum yeah. and then send people back believing they're prepared to article and prepared to enter into the, the, the legal profession in Canada. When, when did the Law Society um, develop a, a, an obligation, a regulatory obli obligation to lay out the welcome mat to anybody who says, I've now gone to law school, I want in? There, the obligation of the law society is to make sure that everyone has a fair chance. If you want to become a lawyer in this province, you have a, as fair a chance as anyone else. I that, understand. And, and, but and, and, what and so, so you can't create a bar, you can't create a hurdle that that impacts on that. And that's the, the problem. If you're saying you have to article before you can practice, but guess what? There's not enough jobs, articling jobs. To me, that's a, that's a, that's a hurdle that, that's unfair. Well, so, so just create that. something that you know. I understand that, I, but I, I just care less if people does, can't make it on their merits. Does, that's doesn't that, that mean essentially though that that the decisions made at Bond Law School in Australia mm -hmm. are now driving um, the regulatory policy of the law society? If we wind up making changes to accommodate that, and and well, well let, let, let's be a little more radical. Okay. Let's let's. You're the man to do that. So so. Why not pick a number? We can have no more than 1,000 lawyers come out of this province every single year. Done. Okay. And? Then, then because we have 1,000 articling spots. So that's it. Everyone else, it's all a lottery. So everyone goes into the lottery, and you get your 1,000 spots. And then that way, that way you've, you've created a system that um, is... is is should be a warning to people who want to go to law school that look there is you know a number there can only be so many lawyers coming out every year and we and so you can go to law school but we're telling you right now it's going to be a lottery whether you're going to get to practice in the province so you have to you have to figure out which way you, you want to have an open door and, and make a level playing field anybody wants to hang out their shingle can and as long as you you know meet the requirements, and as long as those requirements are fair and open to every single person, and not just no, the, 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 so the, that's the practical problem is that we have a regulatory requirement um, in the licensing process right. that requires article. It requires a placement in a private business. The law society has absolutely no ability to influence whether the marketplace um, does or does not provide for those positions. Right. And as a consequence, we you can't have, have that. You, you can't do it then. If if you cannot assure those people of having a spot, I don't think you can you can have that requirement. Or and interestingly enough, as you remember from from convocation, and I didn't know this until I actually read the report that they were talking about this in the 70s. They already identified you know the issue of not enough jobs in the 70s and why are we even having this article in, you know, 40 years ago? I, I just I find mean, it... I, I thought that was amazing. I find it so odd that the fact that a bad idea 
was swapped out <laughs> in the 70s is, is utilized as, as there are evidence and support the of the there argument were, to bring that bad idea back. There were a lot of learned ventures in the 70s. There were many yeah. learned ventures, and there probably will be many in the, in the 2010s. Um, are you running again? Uh, yes. Well, what is still three more years from now? Right? Just wondering. Yes, yes, I am running again. As, uh, as I'll tell anyone who listens, you know, when the Law Society gets stuff right, then then I'll go away. <laughs> but until they do, you're, you're just going to have to put up with me. Fair enough.